Hello, I'm Daniel Fitzhenry. I'm the, the leader of Southampton City Council, and it's a great pleasure to be beginning our Grow podcast, our Grow Southampton podcast, uh, with our first guest, uh, James from Shogun Digital. And um, the, the purpose of our, our podcast really are to talk a, shine a light on real Southampton success stories, businesses that are either starting up or growing, and people that call here home, both from a business point of view and from a work and a play point of view, and really showcase the great work that they're doing and then you know show what we can do as a city so james it's a real pleasure to be with you here and Thank the you. last time i think we were together doing this it was the other way around i know <laughs> very so, awesome. um yeah it was great and uh, welcome and tell us a little bit about you and, and Shogun and the journey and the story absolutely and thank you for having me on as first guest it, no it's great and i think you know my, my journey has been it's quite a rapid one if i'm honest with you i uh, started Shogun digital kind of forward facing the Shogun social now uh, but I'm not a proper name, Shogun Digital. Um, started about a year and a half ago, and it was me kind of being in multiple different... Like my career in marketing has been everywhere, from working with big brands um, and then working with a lot of smaller brands as well. Uh, I'll remain nameless just for the podcast sake. Um, but in every agency I went to, no matter if I was in-house or in-agency, the strange phenomenon was that no one was really valuing their organic content on social media. And by organic, I mean just the free stuff you can post for everyone mm. at home that's not familiar with the terminology. And it always felt really strange to me and that things like influencers exist, for instance, right? And we have businesses with hundreds of thousands at their disposal, all the degrees you can imagine. And yet they're struggling just to connect with people on a regular basis without having to pay through the nose for it. And yet we have kids in their bedroom absolutely smashing it out of the park. Mm. We're just doing some very, very basic elements and, and trying to entertain the audience. I was like, why can't businesses do this? Mm. So that's what I created. I created a business to help other businesses post like creators mm -hmm. and bring those two together. Mm -hmm. When you do work with influencers or creators, it's a collaboration, mm -hmm. not a, I'll pay for you to promote my product. Uh, and actually, you know, seeing that, that traction build off from just a few clients on, on Fiverr in my bedroom to, to being here with a, with a team of five going on six and maybe seven in the next couple of months, it's mm -hmm. been, a, been a wild journey and a very quick one. And I found that, Southampton's been a perfect place for that because there's a gap here for a social agency to rise up in that space, and especially that one that dedicates to just organic social media content. So for me, it's been it's been a, a, a crazy ride and actually quite an honour to be sitting in this chair at, at any rate anyway. So yeah, <laughs> it's great. And you live in the city centre and here we are at uh, Barclays Eagle Lab in the city centre <laughs> in the middle of our city. So uh, it's great, isn't it? And yeah. tell us a bit about the, the tech and the creative sector because it's not... We know there's a lot of it going on in Southampton. The mm -hmm. pandemic has affected that, but it's not always associated with our city. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I think location is almost fading out of the, the tech space anyway. Mm -hmm. There used to be areas that were synonymous with, with tech and innovation, so your, your Bristol's, your Bath's, your, your, your London's, all that stuff. But actually now, from post-pandemic, location is meaningless in terms of where you set up your tech teams. Whether you have a development team that's working on either building a new app or web product, it doesn't matter where they are. And remote working has always been a thing for those in like, the development and coding community anyway. So that was a natural transition. So actually anyone building digital products, finding a home is more a case of where you want to have a home mm. in more of like a you know emotional sense. Mm. Um, so actually finding a city that has a perfect combination of items is probably where a lot of people are going to gravitate to. And I think we'll see a lot of cities that aren't technically known for tech startups mm. to start becoming home for tech and creative startups. So I looked at Southampton as being you know, one my hometown, so I'm going to be biased. I'm just going to let you know now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know... Uh, we love that. It's yeah, fine. we love that. It's kind of the show. Ding! Uh, <laughs> but when you look at stuff like the location we are, so if you need to get to London, you can. Hour and a half, job done. Southampton Central. You've got collaborations with stuff with the Southampton City Council and Barclays Eagle Labs, which is not talked about enough. This mm -hmm. space is doing so much to incubate startups. And I had them on my podcast last week as well, just talking about everything we're doing here. And I would not be in this position without the support of the Council of Barclays Eagle Labs, which is great. Um, but then you add those combinations up together, the city support plus the location, plus the fact that the location doesn't mean anything anymore. You don't have to force yourself to move anywhere. I'm finding that I think this place will be a very good combination for new tech startups. And I think a lot of other places will be as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this space gravitates to and, and builds because some of the stuff that's coming out of Southampton University has been great. I've met many a startup from there that's building some incredible tech uh, that I'm just like... Oof, like they, they. I thought I was going fast. Those uni <laughs> kids are smashing it. So <laughs> I think we'll see a lot of that staying, and I yeah. think we'll see a lot of that growing. Cool. And 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 you've you've touched on really. I sort of suppose the next piece, which is about cultivating young talent, because mm. actually, you know, the city we are a very young city. Yeah. And obviously, tech uh, and media and creative is part of that. Yeah. 
but we have a lot of people that maybe go to university here that aren't necessarily from Southampton that then leave when they get their degree. And what we're trying to do is encourage more people to stay here. So, and then we have our homeborn talent as well. So how yes. do we how do we cultivate that young talent? How do we really let that shine? Specifically, obviously, in your mm. your sector. Cultivating innovating the young talent comes from giving them places to thrive and flourish. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I can uh, be that from the, from the social media sphere going forward in the, in the next few years to really be a place where I can cultivate and hone uh, young talent. I mean, we've got in this very set today with people from you know, work experience working with us to help kind of make this happen. And mm. it's that needs to be given more as an opportunity yeah. because there's many an established player in this town in terms of creative creative industries. And a lot, sometimes I speak to, when I, especially when I used to go to Solent, so many didn't know what those different agencies were. And I think more of a platform needs to be given to individual businesses so they know, so people know there's other businesses exist. I think there's a lot of it is suffering from, I don't know what I don't know. Yes. There's a lot of collaboration that could be had, but we just need to talk to each other about it. Yeah. Um, so there's that, but actually just opening up more agencies, more agencies having different offices down here. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be a wonderful place to, to put down roots and then look at that raw, rough talent around and mm. even some refined ones as well mm. and go, aha, now that is, is where I want to set out and grow into. But to actually grow and cultivate creative talent, you need to give them good challenges and you need to give them a platform to, to actually do it. And that comes from work experience, but that comes from also unique challenges with uh, through universities. So when I look to things that Solent are doing with Solent Creatives, uh, Southampton University obviously do similar initiatives for, for, for business and entrepreneurism or entrepreneurialism. Uh, it's you need to go through routes like that as well as just work experience and, and internships and apprenticeships to make sure that they have multiple avenues they can go down when they go for, for graduation. Yeah. So opening up more opportunities for that in the creative sphere and, and more brands like like mine or bigger brands need to come down and collaborate with universities more to give live briefs. Find where your rough diamonds are in the city. Because mm. this, I've met quite mm. a few so mm. far. I'm like, you're telling me that you're available? Yeah. Like, uh, and that's some, uh, some amazing stuff I've seen. So... Really looking forward to the future of that and just more unis collaborating with businesses and more businesses being known to students is what's going to collaborate and, and cultivate that young talent. Absolutely. And, you know, from my own point of view as a Sotonian, as I started my first business that I owned at 19, Love that. Went, went to Southampton University for a little bit and mm. uni wasn't wasn't for me. But actually I, I saw the power, and, and you've just talked about it, of the university as part of the startup scene yeah. uh, and scale-up scene. And so how are your relationships and, and, and how do you think we build further on the relationship specifically between you know, business and universities? More open dialogue and collaboration. Mm. I think sometimes breaking into universities can be a point of who, who the heck do I talk to, mm. right? And it, <laughs> fighting through the, the cycle of there's reptate there, am I speaking to a decision maker here? I think mm. a, a lot of universities, they probably have someone who's elected to be in charge of, of said you know, work experience and, and brand collaboration. But that's not the same person across all the different departments. Uh, and it, it can be having a single point of contact there could probably help it increase that. But that person who is the point of contact needs to be known mm. amongst the rest of the business community. Mm. So what activity are they doing with like things like the local chambers? Like how can we be known to go, right, here's the person you need when you need to collaborate with a business with a, with a business and get work experience in and find that young talent. Mm. Uh, that needs, I think, needs to be a really great collaboration piece. And some of the more established businesses in the town, I think, could definitely do uh, do some great work with collaborating with the, the chamber slash uh, the university to make that more more apparent and yeah just give more of a platform but open dialogue is the key yeah absolutely and we you know we've got some good new relationships we're starting mm. uh, both with Solent and Southampton and the, and the wider sixth form piece and yeah and, but really I mean the core of all of this you know the reason of this podcast is about showcasing examples showing what our city can be and showing actually that we're a hotbed of opportunity but we're sort of we're halfway there, and the beauty of that is, is it's opportunity. The difficulty of it is, we're like a bit frustrated that we're not there yet, and a lot yeah. more work to do. Yeah. Um, but that's where people like yourself uh, come in and go, look, we can take advantage and really start something and yeah. get it going. From a startup point of view, it's like uh, sometimes I really think about how many, like, especially from the the business problems I, I've, I've encountered so far, and knowing other problems I could solve. I think mm. a, a lot of people in Southampton, or anyone's thinking of doing a startup, needs to get in the problem solving mindset all mm. the time. Mm. So I was like, you know, I don't know, I'm looking for a supplier of lamps. I can't find good lamps in this city. Give me some lamps. And, you know, it's, it's stuff is that simple that can really change the game. And if you yeah. sit there and think about it, what's been tough to get in Southampton? What service could be yep. improved upon? And a lot of the times, people have a limiting mindset when it comes to this stuff because, like, it. 
it, I had the same thing back when I first started. I didn't meet my first business owner until I was 23. It seems like some imaginary thing on TV or when I watch The Apprentice, I'm like, wow, look at what they're doing. Uh, sometimes not the best, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> anyone's watching the latest series or no. Um, but, you know, when you start to actually adopt that mindset and get past the first hurdle, and yes. I think it can, for me, it was getting my first client. And yeah. getting my first client was through a freelance platform on Fiverr and being able to help them. I mean, I'd already been in marketing for like three or four years before that. So actually doing the work was the bit I knew just doing business development for the first time in my life was the bit I didn't know. Mm. Uh, and that was a very unique challenge to go over. But that feeling has never been replaced. That yeah. first win. And that builds momentum. And for those who aren't at that step yet, building, I, we talked about last time, micro momentum, yeah. little wins in your life to build up that confidence and that yeah. step to get there is vital. And I think not enough is put on the mindsets of the people in, in, in the city. And I think doing more work with schools and colleges from, yeah. from a business point of view, even if it's not going to be a return on investment on your time, who cares? You need to inspire that next next gen of talent who could come in and, and help you. And I think more talks, more talking about how possible entrepreneurialism is, especially in a time where the world has opened up. Digital yeah. is for everyone. There's literally a, a website called Free Code Camp where you can completely learn to code in all different realms, Java, CSS, Python, all of it. And it's that is all free. So you can learn it to a basic degree. And then if you, you know, that's a, a web design agency right there. Mm -hmm. But just start small on something so you're obviously not messing up a huge job. But actually, you know, learning the ropes, building your own website off the back of that knowledge, and then bang, you're there. And you did it all for free. Wow. There's so much resource, even from Google. Google and HubSpot have some of the best resources for creative talent. So Google Skillshare is an amazing one. Um, HubSpot, social media marketing certification, content marketing certification. And by the way, these kick out all free certificates that are like permanent. Mm. So you want to turn up to a job interview and you're like, right, I've got this extra one, this extra one, this extra one, oh, here's my degree, when do I start? Yeah, You know, that is yep. that easy, and it's all free, and they only, they only take like four hours each. There's so much potential in the free resources that we have, and it doesn't matter where we're based now. Yeah. And that's the, that's the glory of it. Yeah, And that, you know, that, that that's the beauty of it. You know, business is about solving problems, it's adding value, isn't it? Someone's yeah. got a problem, that's an opportunity. You, know, mm. you take the opportunity, you start, you get a little bit of momentum, and then you scale it. Mm -hmm. You know, and we want to, we are a hotbed, and we want to be a bigger hotbed mm -hmm. for those sorts of things. And that that sort of probably draws us into, you know, wh why why choose Southampton for that? I know we've yeah. touched a little bit on on it already, but why why Southampton for you? Like I said earlier, it was, it's that it's that balance of everything we have here. Like that that for me is is perfect because I'm I'm not one that can. Like I don't like big city life per se. I like a perfect medium between mm. the, you know, getting the conveniences I like, mm. uh, but still having opportunity. Like mm. in somewhere like London, actually, probably starting your own business might feel overwhelming because of how much is going on around you. Whereas here, you can sit back, take a deep breath, and identify opportunities to go after. Mm. And with the support that's already laid out, gets at Solent, what we're doing with Barclays Equal Labs and and the council shows like this to put a platform and to start us our mind. My business is only a year and a half, and look who I'm sat next to. Like it, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. The fact that I'm where's this person here. you sat next to? Well, I don't know, <laughs> some dude. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, it, it, there's there's actually so much opportunity here. I think people just need to give themselves permission to succeed where they live. Yes, this isn't a. I think it's probably, you know, from movies and everything like that, you go on a journey to find the, the promised land and you, you do your thing. Uh, very hercules -y in the way it's done, but actually it's, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. And you can succeed purely through Zoom calls if you want. Mm. Start coaching business for all, mm. I, for all I care. You know, it, it's so much potential there mm. that it's, it's ridiculous. And having a town like Southampton with all the support lined up, all the opportunities and that balance to take a step back and identify opportunities for you to capitalise on, that's why it's the, it's the place for me and why I settled down. And that's really powerful because, you know, we, we talk about our city, our, our vision for this city is about creating a city of opportunity. And mm -hmm. what it really means is everybody's got a skill. Everybody can do something. Everybody can solve a problem and add some value. And, yeah. and that's exactly what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. here in our city, about bringing those people together, creating the environment of success, mm -hmm. showcasing who we are. And, you know, the purpose of Grow, this podcast is exactly to do that. Yeah. You know, you're a living, breathing example of it. Thank started you. in in the pandemic. So, James, that, you know, we are a hotbed of opportunity. That's what we're about as that a city. Um, so, how how has the the startup scene changed in your you know the last eighteen to twenty four months of running a business? Mm. But also before that, from what you know and what you saw and having lived here. Yeah, I think the it's been a couple of things. One, the the support the city's given has definitely ramped up, especially during the pandemic. Mm. Um, because there is so much more opportunity that's come off the, the back of the pandemic as well. It's, it's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of businesses that have been hurt by it and the, the support from the government and everything else has been, has been great for that because um, I, I think we have one of the leading models on how we're supporting businesses in that regard worldwide. 
Um, but there was also so much opportunity to be had off the back of everything changing. Mm. Uh, because not only did you know the pandemic change a lot of how we worked, but there's platforms that rose out during that. Mm. Most notably, everyone will know it, TikTok. TikTok has not only changed, you know, brought a lot of people to that platform, but it's changed the way a lot of other platforms operate. Okay. So in terms of how startups are growing, many a startup has rose to stardom on just the app alone, wow. let alone anything else. And it's because of the way that the algorithm works and how addictive and, and unique it is. But um, that has influenced a lot of what we did. And that's the opportunity I recognize that there aren't many agencies that dedicate to helping businesses break into TikTok, let alone obviously helping them with the, with the rest of the, the social stuff. But how startups change, seeing the digital opportunities, that was, that was the key for a lot of people. Going, right, there's so many more businesses starting here, there and everywhere. It does not matter where I work now. So it's different from when, you know, when you were looking for an agency, they'd have to be local. It doesn't work that way anymore. It can, and it can be helpful, especially if they're doing shoots and all the like. But, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that way. And that opening up has changed a lot. That digital opportunity spotting from multiple people everywhere has done that. And in the support that certain cities, especially Southampton's given, mm. has unlocked opportunities to do that. Uh, and the, all of those for me are like a combination of stuff that's had a kind of a winning effect on a lot of businesses. And like someone, I can't remember who actually said it to me, but they said chaos is a ladder. Mm. And I was like, well, oh, that's, that's a good shout uh, in terms of like, uh, that perfectly sums up opportunity through the pandemic. But hopefully now we're through that um, and, you know, we're, we're all recovering and also seeing opportunity. I think there's, there's a ton of things to come. And I think we won't see it. We won't stop seeing it changing and evolving. Uh, because I wish I'd have seen more of how other startups were oper operating because until I got into Barclays Eagle Labs and started collaborating with all of the other businesses in here, I was blind to other startups because I started in my room and there was plenty of startups doing the same thing. So then your biggest problem as a new business owner isn't your success doing what you're doing or fulfilling what you're doing, is I don't know anyone. Yes. <laughs> I yes. can't collaborate. Yep. I can message them on LinkedIn. But, you know, the way, the way that works is people get those messages all the time. So it's like, oh, well, I don't want to reach out. I don't want to bother them. And then it becomes quite an isolative experience. I think a lot of entrepreneurs suffer from the fact they feel quite lonely sometimes. Um, but actually that can be solved, one, with the power of digital communication and open collaborative spaces like this that are fully funded and have the most ridiculously good facilities you can ask for. So, uh, yeah, I'm a happy bunny now. I've started collaborating. But, yeah, it, it was interesting to see how the startup uh, realm changed once I was here. Yep. There's so many different businesses I identified. An amazing business, uh, Sibstar, uh, that a, a, lo a lovely couple runs. That it's almost like a, it's a, a digital finance platform for those with dementia. So they can have somewhat control over their finances, but also be controlled and safety who, for whoever's there in their, in their yep. care circle. That, for me, is fascinating. And seeing that, that, that rise here as well. There's another digital agency based here. Um, in you digital, there's so even spaces where you similarly share stuff, there's mm. collaboration to mm. be had. And I think a lot of what the pandemic's brought on in the startup scene is competition is fading away and collaboration is coming in. Yep. And that's always been a, a principle in business, but I think there's always been this imaginary veil of, you know, we have trade secrets, you don't. Uh, whereas that is, that is coming down from what's changed with TikTok and authenticity, from how we're trying to collaborate and connect with others. Because I think now life's too short, you know. It's connecting with others is probably the most important thing to lead a fulfilling life if I'm going to get... Uh, metaphorical about it but yeah I think it's, it's it's so so nice to see how it's changed I think it's changed for the better yeah and that well that's really powerful and really really good to hear because um you know when I 20 odd years ago when I was a teenager setting up a business it, there, there was a different feel you know that, yeah. that power of collaborative competition it was scary sense, wasn't it, it yeah it was a scary. lot more competitive it was a lot yeah. more as you mentioned you know a bit old school mm. and there's some benefits in some of those things but mm. you know now it is about bringing together people and driving out value and finding, e and we're an ecosystem or we're functioning that yeah. way. Um, and, you know, I remember setting a, a business up in the last uh, recession, 08, yeah. 09. Mm. But what was it like setting one up during the middle of a pandemic? It was really odd, <laughs> if I'm honest with you, um, because it's not like I had a comparative experience, right? I didn't yes. know what it was like to, I knew what it was like to be in businesses pre-pandemic and work in, in agencies. But, you know, Starting my own was what I knew exactly how it was run. Yeah. I knew how it was run before the pandemic changed things. Mm. So I then had to adapt the model like everyone else did to, f to fit in the hybrid methodology we had. Uh, and y even if you've been in a similar business and you start basically the same thing, if you try and if you just took the models you had and duplicated it into your own business, it's not going to feel you anyway. So mm. you always end up changing everything so much that mm. it ends up being a unique entity. Um, so starting a business in a pandemic was you have to learn so many more digital skills than you think you do. So this is why for us, social media and content creation, oh, that's our bag. 
it is so vitally important to boost personal branding because mm. the the one kryptonite that all businesses have is trust. Mm. It doesn't matter if you're selling e-commerce products or if you're selling a service. If you're not building trust, you're not you're not going to get anyone any any traction. And you know you have to change the way you do that now. Like yep. LinkedIn needs to be your first one of your first ports of call. If it's TikTok, then you really need to rely on TikTok to be your trust building platform. You need to get people to know you before they've met you, yeah. Uh, because otherwise, they will not reach out digitally. Because you have no, you can't knock on their door right now, mm. uh, or you didn't used to be able to. So it it's a fascinating change. On you needed to pivot quite quickly, and those who pivoted quickly enough mm. saw the success from it. And even though I have a long way to go in terms of my social platform. I have a long way to go in terms of my content quality. But I've I've just found the whole the situation fascinating. How those who adapted to digital trust building have won in in, in this pandemic because now you are known for X thing off, yeah. the, off the back of it, when especially if it's an industry that didn't in exist in that format before. And I think that's that's what we found in terms of being a social media agency that doesn't deal in paid ads, that doesn't deal in basically bringing direct customer sales. We help build trust. We sell authenticity. We are mm. the authenticity agency. That angle pre-pandemic w- would have been quite weird, mm. but now it is perfectly set to help businesses push forward and really stop, stop them from being so reliant on ad spend. So, you know, it's just a gap that was identified and we move forward from there. And that's really powerful, actually, because I I think, you know, in my obviously political life and in business life, Mm -hmm. the world was beginning to change. But Mm -hmm. post pandemic, you know, people want to feel closer to whether they live in a place. They want to understand about where they're about, you know, what what, what is it they're doing, the connection. So that trust and confidence Mm -hmm. and authenticity you know the the layers have been stripped back, haven't they? they? Have you indeed. know how do we how do we work together? But who are we and what are we about? People want a sense of purpose and place much deeper yeah. in everything that they're doing, and and you're seeing that obviously in the way that you've then taken your business mm. to, to scale in that area. Yeah, and even finding and bringing towards you great young creative talent because those of younger millennial and Gen Z that trust and the purpose of your business mm. can be far more important than sometimes the salary packet that you mm. offer. Things have changed so much <laughs> because of how the pandemic's forced people to think differently. Mm. We've had to really kind of sometimes evaluate our own mortality during the whole mm. thing to get mm. into quite deep about it. And it, it's been nice to see how, how it's changed. Um, yeah, but for me, it's just always about trust, authenticity and, and all the rest of it. And there's so, and just being more uniquely you and creative, bring down that veil of inve- in, invisible professionalism, I mm. call it, that stops you from being you. Yeah, uh, And I found that, like I wasn't exactly academically gifted, which I think a lot of people who start the entrepreneurial route tend to tend to say as well. They're like, the school books weren't exactly my bag. But, you know, I came out with a good enough grace to get through all the rest of it, all the uni and everything else. Um, but I found that the communication and my style of communication and learning to pitch and be trusted in front of others has served me so much better than everything else. Mm. It's been emotional intelligence over classic intelligence or EQ over IQ. Uh, that has been such a a nice thing to know because <laughs> yeah. you know you have to work with what you've got all the tools you've got when you're when you're starting these businesses and uh, i think there's a lot of people out there that you know don't feel like this especially before i started not smart enough to start a business well that's something for fancy people that know numbers uh when actually no you can get help people to help yeah. you with numbers and uh, you can't do it alone but you can use you to propel yourself forward to start a new opportunity yeah. and again finding places like Southampton to do that where the gaps are is key yeah, and, and you you've hit on another key thing of mine, and one of the mm. reasons why we you know wanted to create this this grow grow podcast was Southampton for me has given me the opportunity to grow businesses and and fail mm-hmm. and, and move forward yeah. and learn from that. Or, or my my belief of failure is is moving on to the next success. Cause, fail, you know, forward, fail forward, fail forward, fast, yeah, and do it. Um, and my political role now as as, as leader of this city, so. This place has really given me an awful lot of opportunity to do stuff, and mm. a lot of what's driving me is to want to give that back. Hence, yeah. why we're here. But, but what about you? How how was how has Southampton helped you grow as a, you know as a Sotonian as a business owner? Yeah, the su- the support in this place, I think, has probably been the biggest factor mm. in in our growth. Mm. So, Barclays Eagle Labs is is an incubator in the truest sense. So it is, there's plenty of places all across the UK that are just co-working spaces. You sit down, there's a desk, crack on. 
Whereas here, there's such a deeper level of support and a community here that I've always found it quite boggling that, you know, more people don't know about it. So there's obviously, like I mentioned earlier, the collaboration throughout all of the businesses here. You can go ask anyone in a different business who's probably more experienced than you how they've done X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And you can just sit down and have a chat with them. And we all exchange time in here yeah. fairly. Uh, that's right. And it happened quite symbiotically. It's not like it's written on the wall, like you must give one hour. <laughs> uh, but actually, it's just happened naturally. It's quite a friendly environment. There's the, the lab managers around this place, Mark, Grace, and Sam top tier they, they always know someone for something mm. and again as a startup with a low connections amount mm. it's it's massive to have that and go oh, i know the perfect person for that sam hobbs especially he's got a contact book bigger than the holy bible i think it, it's amazing so yeah he's he's got it all locked yeah. down uh and just the individual support i've had, had sit downs with both mark and grace for, for probably hours counting up now just talking about like my business problems even if they couldn't help they sit there and listen so you can vent mm. and there's not many people you can actually do that with so that emotional support is there alongside yeah. the other stuff not to mention the programs that they add on top with the Barclays Association so then you've got mentoring systems from the likes of you know Cambridge Judge School Code Base and other you know independent coaching systems that are basically free mentors you can book a session with every month or more than once a month wow. it's just part of the membership and you're not going to get access to someone that there's people on there that have turned raised tens of millions of pounds Built startups of that size. Ridiculous. You don't get access to that anywhere else. And that is so valuable for a startup that's so young. So you have the support network, which you would not have had before, yep. in your bedroom. And, you know, for me, it's also a mindset thing. The place is amazing. It just looks nice. And even the facilities. These things here. Mm. Eagle Labs. The mic's are mine, but the, <laughs> yep. the, the arms themselves are Eagle Labs. And some of the cameras that we're using are owned by Eagle Labs. And we wouldn't have access to those unless we've got big funding from somewhere if it was some kind of tech startup or if you know if i was in a place like this and i'm more than happy to openly admit it because i really appreciate their support and as we grow we'll then be able to afford the whole mm. nine yards worth of production kit mm. uh, and i just found the whole thing fascinating so this place in particular has been the biggest driver for our growth and we doubled in the new year alone just just off the back of that yeah thank you very much and we're, we're planning to have some very hefty hefty gold this year in terms of who we can help and the type of clients we can go on to help but yeah, this place and the economic support has been amazing and I can't wait to start exploring things like Get Set Solon and all the rest. Yeah, brilliant. And, you know, you, you, you talked about community there in terms of the, mm. the, of the Barclays Eagle Lab and one of the reasons why the world has changed post-pandemic is about sense of purpose and community and involvement. Yeah. And that's meant now that people don't need to travel to, to, to London, whether they're in the tech setup or, or, yeah. or any other form of business. Mm -hmm. You know, Southampton has all the components now to be a real regional thriving city and we're a global port and you know part mm. of our political objectives build new international relationships and Absolutely. bring new people ideas and capital yeah. to this city so you know what what does that actually mean because obviously in the tech side of things like you mentioned you can be anywhere mm -hmm. but beyond tech businesses you don't need to you don't need to be based in london so much now southampton is no. is on on your radar if you're not from here currently yeah and talk about a place that's going to open up to when you want to transition internationally yep I happen to be sat in a port. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't be in a better position to then start global expansion if, if I wanted to. And, you know, be, the, the tech sphere is unique in the fact that it, it can be m multiple places. But in the creative industries, I suppose, especially when you start talking about the production side and, and video creation, you do need to be more local to that person. Mm. It's not like we can do shoots every day up in Manchester, for instance. Yes. So that regionality does help. And there's so many more businesses settling down here that the opportunity is, is getting really good in terms of a pool of people that need the service you may offer, mm. uh, but you still have that locality. Mm. So that international stuff coming in or will be soon coming in in a, in a bigger capacity is going to seriously transform how businesses that do rely on locality yeah. function. And I'm so looking forward to how that actually pans out. Yeah. Yeah, and our, and our uh, uh, City of Culture bid, you know, hopefully we win. Mm. Uh, we'll know in the next few months, and we've got a, a free port. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We've got a, a free port uh, going live this year, yeah. uh, you know, a global port trading with the world. So all those international connections are, are absolutely um, mm. there. Yeah, so James, what, what, what do you think businesses, startup businesses, scale-up businesses, what do you think they need to know about, about the city? What are the key things for them? I think key things to, to, to identify really is if you're going to you know, pick a base of operations, you have a whole host of things to choose from. The city centre is great. The, the Ocean Village has some amazing mm. facilities down, down there. Places like the old Bond Store, Barclays Eagle Labs, Inq Hive, the new, the new place that just opened up uh, clockwise. Yeah. There are many great places to actually find a network or a community that's for you. 
because there's because there's so many options you actually get the love the pick of the yes. litter really in terms of where you want to settle down and they all have their their uniquenesses that can complement each different business yeah obviously eagle labs is perfect for us because of the mentoring support plus yep. the facilities right but old bond store i've heard some amazing things about and they definitely need to get more of a, a shout out there as well so there's picking location one is is, an, is one thing Two, you know, if what affiliations do you want with certain universities? So if you're going to be in the tech sphere, having like great connections with Southampton, for instance, can be amazing. But if mm. you want the creative, Sonic Creatives is right there. There's mm. our agency on the tax on the side of it. So, you know, identifying if what relationships you want to build on that side and really looking at your business from the top down and going, okay, what strategic relationships can I build here? What's my location going to gonna look like from that point of view? And what's the gap in terms of what opportunities are available in certain sectors? So obviously being a port town, there's so much to do here in terms of marine, everything else. Yep. And what can you identify to help solve problems in those niches? So actually, if you're, especially for startups, evaluate it from the top down, almost like a bit of a monopoly map and figure out, you know, where do you want to buy up, Right. Uh, in, <laughs> in terms of how you're going to play that out because sometimes looking at it objectively sketching it out and go here's my plan of attack American football style you know get a little mm. sketch pad out uh, it can actually help you kind of really formulate that in, in, in your brain and many people do it in different ways but that's one of my favourites really map out and write it down so identifying where you want those opportunities and then obviously seeing what local funding is about so like I said again get set, get set a sonar is another great one uh, our Innovate UK or options down here in the south things like that if you need to go grant funding wise uh, so it's about a thousand one opportunities and even looking into things like networking events and shows Hampshire business show that goes down in the Aegeus mm. Bowl every, every year amazing so much opportunity down there I've had many a leader actually still talking to at the moment that's come off the back of when we were there last good so there is a ton of potential there networking location looking at objectively the, the opportunities you can solve yep. look at it from the top down and you'll find that Southampton is green lights all the way yeah and, and, and actually part of that as well of that opportunity I mean, we, we believe in, in a place where anyone can, every, everyone has a skill set, as mm. we said before, and the opportunity is just everywhere. It, yeah. You know, it's just understanding what works for you. But in key in all of that is, you know, growing Southampton and opportunity is about growing our people. Yes. And in order to appeal to people, you know, the world is changing. People's work-life balance is changing what they want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what are your thoughts or have you tried or, or are you using the sort of four-day working week or a more flexible working approach? How does that... Yeah. Does that resonate for you or, or, or not? Yeah, as, as a startup, we were lucky enough to, before everyone else was trialling it, I think even before, you know, might, I think Scotland might have beat us to it, um, but we got to trial the four-day work week here at the agency. And mm. for a startup, um, you can very much be in the mentality, especially if you're in a creative spa uh, competitive space like London, you'd go, well, now I'm competing with other agencies that are working five days a week and we're working four. Or actually, because I, this is the location we picked, we didn't have to have such a rushed competitive approach to how we tried to scale. So actually, we experimented with the four-day work week. It went really well. Uh, and now we're doing four-and-a-half-day work weeks just so people can finish off any little bits they need to do. Yep. And that's a permanent fixture of ours. That's not going That's not going anywhere for me. Everyone gets half-day Friday. And, you know, as a startup that's been going a year and a half, uh, I find that is is as a nice opportunity to be able to actually do. Mm. Because I, when I started this, I kind of made a promise to myself that I'd build the agency that I wish I was in. Yes. And, you know, that's adding elements like this four-and-a-half-day work weeks, complete flexibility. Text me in the morning, you want to work from home? Home it shall be, mm. unless there is, like, a kind of shoot going on. Need to book a doctor's appointment? Don't bother me. Uh, you know, as we scale, I may it may differ in terms of how we have to do things because more processes get brought into things, HR and all of that. But as a startup, I've been able to actually build an environment where we've got that flexibility and can can do what we like, but still absolutely smash out the work. And yep. that for me has been a really nice thing to be able to do. And it's it, it's all about horses for courses, really, isn't it? You know, mm. some people some people's businesses where they all need to be there if they're in production or manufacturing, mm. or more need to be in, will have a different approach. But ultimately. Yeah. It's about creating the flexibility that works for you, your industry, your business, bringing the value to the marketplace. Yeah. Doesn't it? It rolls back to trust, doesn't it? Yeah, like The absolutely. trust has to be extended online to your, your customers. You build that and show you're almost about that life, for, like, for lack of a better term. But actually now, you have to do it internally for your staff as well. Yeah. Like, and even if you have to be somewhere on the day, sometimes like, like I've, got, I've got a dentist. Off to the dentist. Yeah. Not, I'm not. It's, yeah. we're, we will we'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, and I think everyone needs that now. It's for, obviously for mental health purposes as well. Because there's so many things where people do need to take time to decompress. They do need to take time to look at themselves and make sure they're they're okay. Absolutely. Because sometimes you just need to go. I just need to stay at home in the morning just to decompress and really crack on because this deadline's like really bugging me. Like, do yeah. it. Do what you need to do and let me know if you need support on that. And you know, trying to build environments, especially for startups going forward, where you can have an emotional support network as well as an like, educational mm. support network. Mm. I think it's going to be really important for startups going forward, especially if you want to attract Gen Z and millennial talent. Mm. 
and and actually, you know, it, one of the things that's significantly overlooked and, and not ma- much talked about in business mm. is this sort of concept of having to work all the time and not having a balance. Well, actually, you know, the best people spend as much time in rest and recovery. Mm-hmm. If you're an athlete, you do. You know, you can't always be in peak performance. Nope. Um, and it's really important you build that in. And, of course, you, you become the change you, you want to see at the end yeah. of the day, and everyone models from the leadership downwards, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. And um, I, I wish I could practice what, my, what I preach in that regard. <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, that's because I'm enthused with my dream, and everyone's yeah. capacity to be able to put in that extra work is different. Yeah. And a lot of startup owners now are recognising the fact that you, know, not, you can't expect people to do the same ungodly hours you do unless they've got equity in that business. Yes. Like you have to lay out some, some expectations to go, go home, it's five o'clock. Uh, don't worry, I've got this if, if you want to push that forward. Uh, but yeah, it, it, is, it is interesting to see how that has changed. And I think there's a lot of businesses that have been adapting. And we as a city are well placed to really embrace that work life. But I mean, I was on with uh, uh, Nella Pang from Amiga Real Estate a yes. few weeks ago. You know, her big thing is about talking. Uh, about you know the, the the opportunity that we have as a place outside mm. of London and all the things we've talked about Southampton South Coast we've got it all haven't we it's all yeah. here uh, yeah couldn't agree more and I'm really looking forward to hearing from all those business owners as well because mm. that's a, that's a big thing for me because again I still haven't met Nelly yet I've just heard a lot about her oh uh, you'll so, enjoy it yeah I just want to connect with as many business owners as possible and again that it's just that's the opportunity that lies in front of me and it's just it's almost like a, a nice to have them oh I can do that yeah yeah, yeah I love that. And it's just great to be in a city that does allow that and is so open to that collaboration to the point where they're building projects like this and yep. all the others to facilitate that. And if, if there's anything that's going to gather togetherness, it's going to be hearing each other's stories yes. and building trust with each other. Yeah, and it's the emotional piece. Mm. You know, nothing happens overnight. It takes time. It takes emotional intelligence, as you talked about before, yeah. and understanding self mm-hmm. and balance. And so, you know, as we come to the end of the, the podcast and the show now, uh, and our first show. So yeah. thank you for that. Is there you. any sort of nuggets or wise words of wisdom that you want to sort of leave on um, about your business and about Southampton and why Grow Southampton is a great project and yeah. taking it forward? Absolutely. I think anyone, get, in, get involved with the project any way you can uh, because Grow are going to do some amazing things and we've only just begun mm. really in terms of the potential it has. I think the more people that can rally behind it shows how this as well will really add, add benefit to it. And the fact that this exists reach out to us grow anyone mm. else to be a part of, of this because we want to hear from everyone yes we get as many stories many angles from em, as many different backgrounds as possible to show off the city or culture that we will become fingers yep. crossed um but nugget nuggets of wisdom i think biz, any business that needs to shift how they use social media and reevaluate its importance needs to do it now yeah because you know tiktok is got one point uh, it's got one, over a billion users at the moment it'll be set for a one including point f- me in, yes, uh, I've converted you. I'm on the TikTok massive. Yes. <laughs> um, and it will be set for 1.5 billion by basically the middle of the year. That is an insane number. Yes. So it's already surpassed Twitter and LinkedIn as it is now. Wow. And it will, might surpass Instagram by the time we get there. And most businesses have an Instagram. But if you don't think you need a TikTok, we really need to evaluate mm. that. But it has a very different feel to it. Mm. You cannot apply the same social strategy. Mm. It's a whole different bag. But the only advice I can give is download it and use it because you understand the culture pretty much immediately, right? Yeah. It's a very different feel and you can see how it's then changed everything else. So have a look at how important your organic social media channels are again because you, you have a platform there that is free that can give you hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, even thousands in reach yeah. if you use it the right way. Yeah. And it is absolutely worth the return on investment. But you need to go through the same learning process as a creator would. So just like all YouTubers... It takes six months to a year to find their feet, find their flow, find what their audience likes and build an audience. Businesses now cannot get away with not going through that process. They need to learn it. They need to do it. They need to become who they are meant to be Mm. in that sense. Uh, And the sooner you go through that learning process, the better and the better your ads in all places in marketing will perform because the trust is built here and then the rest circles out. out. And it makes 100% sense. It's just dedicating the time and the money to do so and building an actual audience instead of having to just keep paying out of pocket for it because no one wants to do that. And, you know, just from talking to many business owners, as you will soon, you'll know for that they're so entertaining to talk to. Mm. I wish I could extend that into their business. And Mm. they absolutely have the potential to do so. And it's just starting, isn't it? It's starting and finding your feet that, you know, as we went, that you know, yeah. so it's fail forward, just keep, there's no failure. There's just finding your flow. And I remember when I first mm. did a video, it was awful, but I carried on doing <laughs> Everyone's it. Everyone's one is. Um, and there's so much improvement everywhere. Yeah. In, in the Facebook ads world, it's called creative sandbox testing. So you'll have like six, six concepts. You test that, test that, test that. What works? Okay, those two don't. New one's in. And you just keep doing that. It, it, it is as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate it. Think, what would this human like? Mm. Even if it's B2B. 
because they, they lock themselves off the most. Mm. Whereas they actually have probably have the most freedom to connect on a human level, to talk to the human behind the desk yeah. that will be signing off the check. Yeah. Well, James, I mean, you and I could sit here and talk for hours, I'm we pretty really sure. Could, yeah. <laughs> but um, thank, thank you very much for your input and ideas and, and your thoughts and your story and your journey about, you know, starting a business, growing it in our city, why you've chose Southampton. And, uh, you know, this is the beginning of our journey of Grow Southampton, really, for, for me, about showcasing all the great businesses, the talent we've got in our city to encourage people to start a business. But also, I meet lots of business owners day in, day out, who, you know, don't know how... To, have got a great business, but they don't know how to grow. They don't know what the next steps are. They don't know who to turn to and talk to. So if you're listening um, and you're, you're not sure, please reach out to us. We'll be, we'll be talking to hopefully many of you to come and, and interviewing you over the coming months and talking to you about what we're trying to do and finding out your Southampton story. But this really now is about going, do you know what? We have a great city, a really ambitious program for the future. We've got so much talent. We want a bit of shine a bit of light on it, have a bit of fun, uh, do some one-to-one uh, you can uh, you can take the mick out of me as if you like uh, in in the future as well and um, and really grow grow our people grow our city for the future. So thank you, James. Thank you to thank you, you uh, listening uh, to our to our first podcast. And we look forward to seeing you. Follow us on the social media. Share away alike. We're unashamedly proud of our city and very much about promoting it. So uh, we look forward to seeing you again on the next podcast. Thank you, James. Thank you very much. You're welcome.